Have you come across the terms Newtonian and Cassegrain in your research for a new telescope? Are you not quite sure what the differences are between them and exactly what each one can offer? Well, either way, you've come to the right place because today I'm going to be breaking down these two popular telescope optical designs with you here today. But before we begin, I do just want to quickly mention that I do actually have an entire telescope buying guide resource which you can access via the, the link in the description below. So that's a, a comprehensive 80 page resource which will help you identify what is the right telescope for you. So it covers everything you need to look at and, to, and consider, all of the specification, terminology, etc. And it will help ensure that you get the right telescope first time round for your budget. So with all that said, let's delve into today's topic. So first and foremost, we need to begin what are Newtonian telescopes? Well, Newtonian telescopes are a type of reflecting telescope invented by Isaac Newton, hence the name. They use a parabolic primary mirror to gather light and a flat secondary mirror to redirect light to an eyepiece, providing clear and magnified views of celestial objects. Now, there are various different types of Newtonian telescopes, and the main ones to be aware of are Schmidt Newtonian telescopes, which essentially merge Schmidt, Cassegrain and Newtonian features. And these are primarily used by astrophotographers because they help provide sharper images. The second new type of Newtonian telescope to be aware of is the Maxitov Newtonian. Now this also is a combination. So it combines a mix of a Maxitov corrector with a Newtonian path, again, helping to provide wide field views. And the final one to be aware of is the Jones Bird. And that's a modified Newtonian, which helps to provide uh, enhanced optical performance, but it is a kind of rarer design. So you may be wondering what Newtonian telescopes look like. And as you can see on screen, that is the Celestron Advanced VX, VX 8 inch Newtonian telescope. And just let's just walk through some of the features of these telescopes. So they typically have a cylindrical or tubular shape. At one end, you'll find the primary large parabolic mirror. Midway up the tube, a small flat secondary mirror, which is angled at 45 degrees to redirect the light to the side of the tube. Now an eyepiece or viewer is situated on the side of the tube where this reflected light exits. So the telescope often rests on a mount, as we can see on screen, which can vary from a simple out azimut design to a more complex equatorial mount. So the open end of the tube opposite the primary mirror is where the telescope gathers light from the observed object. Now let's look at the Cassegrain telescope. So Cassegrain telescopes are a type of reflecting telescope. So they use a parabolic primary mirror and a hyperbolic secondary mirror to fold optics and extend the focal length. And this helps to direct light through a hole in the primary mirror to an eyepiece or camera at the back. So again, you get different types of Cassegrain telescopes, as we've already covered the Schmidt Cassegrain. But there is also the Maxitov Cassegrain, which uses a meniscus lens, providing high contrast images, which are kind of useful for planetary viewing, but they are typically heavier. There is also the Argonov Cassegrain, which again is rarer, but this employs multiple mirrors, minimizing chromatic aberration without corrector plates. So just be mindful, again, you get those differences. So on the screen here, we have a Celestron Advanced VX8 Schmidt Cassegrain. And just looking at it, you can see they are slightly different. So they are com more compact and tubular, tubular, and they feature a primary mirror at the tube's end and a secondary mirror reflecting light back to it. So the primary has a hole directing light to the rear eyepiece. Now some types, like the Schmidt Cassegrain you can see on the screen, have a corrector plate to minimise those optical aberrations. So you can hopefully see that. So let's now look at the differences between Newtonian and Cassegrain telescopes. So firstly, the optical path. So the way to view this is that Newtonians have a flat secondary mirror, whereas a Cassegrain has a hyperbolic secondary mirror. So essentially it's how the light is reflected. So with Newtonians, the flat secondary mirror reflects light out to the side of the tube to the eyepiece, 
Whereas in cassegrains, the secondary mirror reflects light back towards the primary, which has a hole in its center. So light exits through this hole to the eyepiece located at the back of the telescope. So they work in very, very different ways. Next, we have the tube length. So in Newtonians, they are generally longer due to the straightforward path of light from the primary mirror, mirror to the side mounted eyepiece. Whereas cassegrains are more compact because the optical path folds within the tube, allowing for a shorter overall length. Then we have the eyepiece location. Eyepieces on a Newtonian are on the side of the telescope tube, roughly near the top. Whereas with cassegrains, the eyepieces are located at the bottom rear of the telescope behind the primary mirror. Next, we have portability. Newton Newtonians tend to be bulkier and less portable, especially at larger apertures. Whereas cassegrains are more compact designs, which are easier to transport and set up initially. Then we have the secondary mirror size. Newtonians typically have smaller secondary mirrors, which can mean less obstruction and potentially higher contrast. Cassegrains, on the other hand, often have a larger secondary mirror, leading to a greater central obstruction, which might reduce contrast. Then we have the collimation sensitivity. Newtonians are considered somewhat more forgiving in terms of collimation, which is the alignment of the optics, compared to some Cassegrain designs. Then we have variants, and as we discussed at the start of the video, Newtonians, while there can be slight variations in the design, the Newtonian setup is fairly standard across them. Whereas with Cassegrains, among the several variants, like the classical Cassegrain or the Schmidt Cassegrain, they each have unique optical characteristics and can differ quite tremendously. So now the all-important question, who are Newtonian telescopes best for? Well, Newtonian telescopes are best for astronomy beginners or those seeking a cost-effective solution with good optical performance. They offer a wide field of view, making them ideal for observing deep sky objects like nebula, star clusters and galaxies. Their straightforward design minimises optical aberrations. However, their side-mounted eyepiece may not be ideal for everyone, especially those with mobility issues. Due to their size and collimation needs, they are suited for enthusiasts willing to invest time in setup and maintenance for high-quality, wide-field astronomical observations. What about Cassegrains? Who are they best for? Well, Cassegrain telescopes stand out for their compactness, versatility and low maintenance, especially when compared to Newtonians. Their folded optical design makes them ideal for travellers and those with limited storage. They excel in both planetary and deep sky observation and their often paired computerised mounts simplify object location for beginners. Many Cassegrains are adept at astrophotography, offering detailed planetary views while Newtonians might be preferred for wider deep sky shots. Though Newtonians can be more cost effective, offering a larger aperture for the price, Cassegrains provide a balance of observational and astrophotographic capabilities with the added potential for terrestrial viewing. So I hope this was all useful. As I mentioned earlier, if you are in the market for a new telescope, I would strongly recommend that you check out the ultimate guide to buying your perfect telescope. That's my guide. This is an 80 page resource and it will really, really help you identify what telescope is best for you and your budget and will ensure you get the right one first time round. So as I say, check out that link, head over there. But with all of that said, I hope you have an excellent day. Don't forget to hit the like uh, button and subscribe to this channel. I'm going to be re releasing a lot more content just like this. So with that said, all the best.